Welcome to another video tour from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in Duluth, Minnesota. If you remember our last daily episode of As the Big Wheels Turn, the story of a big time engine in a small time town. We got thinking about our Mallee locomotive, the Yellowstone, and in the tour of it, we also thought about the Union Pacific's mammoth steam engine, the big boy, the 4014. And then we remembered it was here in Duluth in 2019. The engine left Cheyenne, Wyoming, where it had undergone a three-year, $5 million restoration by the Union Pacific Railway to celebrate their sesquicentennial. From there, it went to Omaha, the home office of the UP. Then, it spent a day in Boone, Iowa, half a day in St. Paul, and an entire weekend here in Duluth. Thanks to some friendly contributors, we put together some memories, video, and still shots of that great weekend, which we call the Festival of Steam. Coming towards Duluth, the mighty steel behemoth, the 4014, better known as the big boy, pulling its train of Union Pacific executive fleet cars, passing on a siding just around Carrick and Bruno, between the Twin Cities and just outside of Duluth. Here she passes underneath the former DM&IR, now Canadian National Ore Docks, just to the west of the depot, as she heads into our neck of the woods. Here she's pulling right along the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, fenced off to the public. They crammed as close as they could get to watch the big engine arrive. It was like a celebrity coming to town, like a movie star, something from the past that was recreated and come alive again. And here it is pulling in with Ed Dickens, the man from Union Pacific who was in charge of its restoration and engineer. With him, two of our volunteers, we have Max Whipperman, and behind him is Greg Lejeune, as the big engine pulls into the depot. It came in on the track right outside along the side of the Lake Spear Railroad Museum gallery building, slowly making its way up to the bumper, past our crew of uh, very watchful supervisors, including myself. The engine moves slowly as it pulled its train into the station. Everyone waved, of course. On the other side, and you can just barely see them through the undercarriage, the area was packed. That night, we had a night photo session. Photographers came down, we lit the train specially, and night photos were taken of the mighty engine on a special event that evening. We, of course, left the lights on for the general public all night. There's a parking ramp, which gave you great height to take a down shot. And so we left the lights on so that anybody could come by any time of the night and see the engine as she just kind of steamed away. After the night photo session on that next Saturday, the Festival of Steam, free to the public. You could come down, you could get right up close and personal to the locomotive, you could touch it, you could feel it, you could feel the heat coming off the boiler, you could smell that steam and you could walk up and look in the cab. And there's the inside of the mighty big boy. She's an oil burner today, and that's why you've got that special cover right in front of the injectors that put the oil into the big boiler that heats up the steam into that firebox. You're looking at the big boy that was scrawled on the front of the engine when she was built. One, one of the builders at the Elko plant just said, you know, it's gonna be a big boy when it's done. The 4014 was a hit. 12,000 people came to see it that weekend. The nice part was that Ed loved everybody. He wanted to talk about his steam engine, and you could ask him any question you wanted, and he'd explain it right curbside by the engine itself. Oh, we sold souvenirs. We had live music all day. You could listen to the band and enjoy their music. We had chairs set out so you could just sit back and relax. And behind you, there was that big steam engine. And of course, we had the fire brick grill going, so everybody had some delicious food to eat. They could spend the whole day, take pictures, visit with Ed, and other members of his staff were there as well. If you uh, wanted to talk to them, you could uh, ask them any question that you wanted. And as you can see, people took picture after picture after picture. I got to imagine this was on a few Christmas cards this year. That's just what I'm thinking. There were that many photos taken. And Ed, always gracious, always talking about the Union Pacific. And coming in that view now is the 
other steam engine that ran that weekend, ours. We'll see more of that in just a few minutes. There's the back of the Union Pacific Executive Train, and hey, let's listen to the music for a moment. This was live all day. That's the Lighthouse Trio, making the Festival of Steam festive all day long. Crank it up, boys. People had such a great time that they stayed all day. We saw people that would come in the morning, have lunch at the grill, stay all afternoon, and then maybe take a train ride, which is, of course, why we had our number 332 ready to pull passengers. The big steam engine stayed put, but our steam engine was ready for the main line. Here it is being steamed up in the morning. Getting all ready to go, that 200 pounds of pressure in that number 332, which was originally the 28. We renamed it to its original heritage on the Duluth and Iron Range Railway. Built in 1906. She's a consolidation 280. Built by Alpha. There are only about 150 working steam engines in all of North America. And we've got one of them. By the way, she will be running again this summer. But here she was at the Festival of Steam. It was a longer than normal train because so many people wanted to ride. And why not? Here behind her is the Lake of the Isles dining car, where we served a first-class lunch. And then speaking of first class, how about riding in a dome car? And behind that, our regular excursion trains of two great northern coaches, followed by our bud car. And behind that, a vintage coach from just after the turn of the century which would have fit in great behind the 332 back in the day. But she was built for the long haul. She was built for pulling drags of ore cars and mixed freight. And very rarely did she have the opportunity to pull passenger trains like she is here. So this is something new for the engine, and it did just fabulous. Pulling into the station now, we ran trip after trip. And oh, behind it, there was that open air car so you could actually smell the coal smoke feel it as it came through the air. We uh, used a pull-pull method that day because we don't have a Y where we were going with the steam engine. So we used our 193, another DM and IR engine, which we thought was appropriate. And then, of course, so it could pull right into the station. Now that steam engine is in the proper direction. Everybody gets to see the arrival of the steam engine. Something that hasn't happened in real life at the Duluth Depot for over 50 years. Here it is happening again. Train load after train load of happy passengers. But imagine this, two working live steam engines in the same place at the same time, and one of them the biggest ever built. That evening, the Festival of Steam came inside for a gala event. And here is the treat of treats. You get to tour the first class cars of the Union Pacific Railway sit under the domes like a big shot millionaire railroad tycoon. These were the best of the line. And they're the executive fleet now for the Union Pacific Railway. This is underneath that dome in a not so contemporary look. And now we enter into the dining car. And what a dining car it was. And very nicely, the Union Pacific folks were kind enough to donate the hors d'oeuvres for the evening on the train. Food stations inside made sure you didn't go home hungry. And a wine tasting, again, thanks to the great folks at the UP. Steampunk, though, was our theme. The steampunk theme was a, a surprise to many people, but boy, did they enjoy it. Lots of pictures taken of our crew decked out. Here you have them with the conductors from Union Pacific standing in front of the Union Pacific Experience car. We had celebrities visit us during the day. Here's our good friend Jim Rin, the editor of Trains Magazine. He traveled with the engine on most of its trip, documenting it for Trains Magazine. And our gala was mentioned as one of the high points of the tour. Here's the diesel locomotive that accompanied the train. A helper engine if it was needed, but it's an SD70 ACE, which means it was an AC engine, not the DC that the older models were. This was new, brand new, state-of-the-art locomotive. And you can see in the cab, it's not like a diesel locomotive of the past. You've got all those nice windows, and then you've got, of course, the windows that are on those computer screens. 
This is the baggage power car that accompanied it. Here you see the inside of the experience car. Celebrating the 150 years of the Transcontinental Railway, which was the reason that UP restored the big behemoth in the first place to celebrate their 150th sesquicentennial. And what a great day it was. Here's the dome car that made up the train, one of two, by the way, that were in the consist. Here's the dome underneath the glass, and downstairs more of a coach. The better dome coming up, the one that uh, we liked. Here's the dining car set up for a special breakfast. Hosted by Union Pacific, we had uh, invited some of the local politicians and civic leaders to attend, and they turned out and had a delicious breakfast with us, courtesy of the Union Pacific Railway, in their dining car. Here's that dome car I was talking about. Now that's a pretty nice ride. Underneath, quite comfortable as well. They had very few people riding the train, actually. These were uh, employees of the Union Pacific. There's Josh. He got his picture taken on the back of the president's car of the railway. That is actually the Union Pacific president's car that made every trip just in case the president wanted to ride along. Josh got to see it. So did everybody else, by the way. And there were plenty of pictures at the gala taken on that back platform. Now we're getting ready to leave, and you can see that we've moved the steam engine over to our runaround storage track and we've left the diesel to back up that way our engine can come in and now we are loading and unloading passengers on track number one and the reason for it side-by-side -side photos of two live working steam engines in the same place at the same time and here are all the people that put this together we couldn't have done this without the Union Pacific, without the help of Jim Wren and Trains Magazine, certainly not without our great staff here at the North Shore Scenic Railroad and Lake Superior Railroad Museum. We are so very fortunate to have these people that you see here, many of them volunteers, to make sure that our railroad runs safely and that we can put on events like the Festival of Steam where 12,000 people came and saw the biggest engine ever built. I want to thank Fred Hoser for the pictures you're seeing, along with photographers Jeff Terry, Josh Miller, and of course Tim Shandell, our curator, and Dave Schauer. Well, the engine backed out of the station so that it was pointing in the right direction once it got back to the Grassy Point draw and headed out of town. So now we've hooked up the big boy again, and the whole concept is backing out. There you see underneath the or docks of the Canadian National Railway, once the DM and I are. Fred's out in a boat now, so you get some water shots. These tracks go right along the bank of the St. Louis River. Of course, the big boy is an articulated engine, so that front set of drive wheels and pistons actually pivot on their own, and that allows it to go around corners. Here's a great shot of it coming across the grassy point draw. Now, this is a five mile an hour segment of railroad, so when you see it going this slow, keep in mind that everything that passes this swing bridge, this historic span, goes at the same slow speed of five miles an hour. But it does give you a chance to really see that engine. A couple of blasts of the whistle, because there are other boaters out there with Fred as well. It wasn't just people coming down to see the engine on land at the Festival of Steam, but on water too. There were a whole flotilla of boats of all kinds that came out to take a picture as that big engine crossed the Grassy Point draw. On its way to probably the toughest spot on the entire journey of the big boy across the nation. It had to get through lst and Junction. That's the Lake Superior Terminal and Transfer. Here you got the last great shot as she comes off the bridge into that LST&T junction. As you can see, this might have been the tightest spot that this engine ever had to come across in her real life or her rebirth. This is a double diamond crossing with a very tight corner, and she just creeped across. This is called walking the engine. What you don't want to have happen is it rides up on the flanges, and the flanges can ride up on top of the rail, and then, of course, those wheels could slip off. And can you imagine trying to re-rail this? That would be a nightmare. Luckily, LST&T Junction proved not to be the test.
Here we see the engine further away from Duluth, crossing the Chippewa River, right above Chippewa Falls near Eau Claire, Wisconsin. She is on her way to Altoona, which was a Chicago Northwestern yard, now a Union Pacific one, where she will be on display for the folks in central Wisconsin to come and see her before she heads to Adams Friendship. That yard in Altoona, by the way, right across from the very famous 400 Club Bar. Ah, such great memories. Thanks to all the contributors. Thanks to Ed Dickens, our dear friend, Jim Wren, all the celebrities that showed up. But the biggest celebrity in town that weekend was definitely the 4014. We'll have more of these tours coming up because, well, we're temporarily closed. But we'll open soon, and we want you to come and see us. We also want you to do what you have to do which is wear a mask. It's not a task. It's the right thing to do. Josh is way back there, so keep your social distance. Wash your hands, cover your coughs, don't touch your face, and you know the most important thing, let's take care of each other.